Welcome. Welcome on the radio, WKLK AM 1230, as we have been for 70 years. Welcome on YouTube, where we've been posting for several years as well, and where we are now trying to provide the best worship experience that we possibly can in these physically distant times until we can be back together in person. Now, God doesn't promise the path of the disciple to be an easy one. Jeremiah feels the pain of rejection from those who don't want to hear what he has to say what God has told him to say. Jesus declares that his words will bring stark division. Even so, we need not be afraid, for God accounts for every hair on our heads. Jesus says so. Even though we may experience rejection or frustration, division, and death itself, God's grace and love make us a new creation each day. Jesus said so. Marked with a cross in worship, we can be strengthened and sent to witness to Christ in the world. Now, a few notes about the worship today. It's summer. You see, we're, we're robeless as we often are in, in summer worship, that, and it's clear from the weather as well. So often in summer, our Savior's worship takes on a little different lurk, look, a little bit relaxed, a few shifts in the pattern of the worship, some different words for our rituals. The point of this work that we do together, the worship work of the people, literally what liturgy means, the work of the people, is to praise God and be nurtured for the service of Christ in the world. So some of the words that we use for that can change in the summer, and we're going to do that this year. For example, you may have noticed last week that the affirmation of faith wasn't the Apostles' Creed that we use most of the time, or even the more recent Nicene Creed that we've been using uh, during, since COVID times and in the, the season of Easter. Last week it was more, um, kind of more reflecting what was going on in the worship that day. It came from a, another resource. Well, we're going to be doing something like that pretty much through the rest of the summer. And we'll be doing another little thing, too, with the Lord's Prayer. We're going to be going, actually, to the Bible, imagine that, for the Lord's Prayer, digging into some different translations of the Bible to find some different versions of the Lord's Prayer. Like this week, for example, we'll be using the alternative version that's been in the, our hymnal. It was back in the Green Book days, and it's also in Evangelical Lutheran Worship, our new Cranberry book as well. So that's this week. And then in following weeks, we'll be going to the Good News and to the Message and to the Revised Standard. You'll see as we come along. Now, those of you who are listening on the radio, these words might not be as familiar for you to follow along. So I just ask you to invite you to open your hearts to those words. That's another one of those things that can happen as we, as we use different words for these things, is that it gives, it gives us the opportunity to listen and to pay attention to the words that we're using so that it doesn't just turn into sort of rattled off rote kinds of words, but it, the meaning of it can take on a, a, little deeper, a little deeper sense for us. So hopefully that'll happen for those of you listening. Those of you who are watching, the words will be on the screen for you to follow along. Our music that we begin with this week is Take My Life That I May Be.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess, confess that, that we, we do, do not trust your abundance, abundance and, and we, we deny, deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us, and in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us now live in hope. For hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Teach, Teach us, good, good Lord, Lord God, to serve, serve you as you, you deserve, deserve, to give, give and, and not, not to count, count the cost, cost to, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to, to labor and not to ask for reward. reward except that of knowing that we do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. First reading, Jeremiah 20, 7 through 13. Jeremiah accuses God of forcing him into the ministry that brings him only contempt and persecution. Yet Jeremiah is confident that God will be strong protector against his enemies, and commits his life into God's hands. O Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughing stock all day long. Everyone mocks me, for whenever I speak, I must cry out. I must shout violence, destruction, for the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say, I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot, for I hear many whispering, terror is all around, denounce him. Let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed, and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will not stumble, and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous. You see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them. For to you, I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord. For he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of the evildoers. Word of God, word of life, thanks, thanks be, to, be God. to God. Psalm 69, 7 through 18. Please read responsively. The assembly's portion is in bold print. Surely for your sake I have suffered reproach, and shame has covered my face. I have become, I have become a, a stranger to my, to my own, own kindred, kindred, an, an alien, alien to my, to my mother's, mother's children. children. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. The scorn of those who scorn you has fallen upon me. I, I humbled, humbled myself with, with fasting, fasting, but, but that, that was, was turned, turned to, my to my reproach. I put on sackcloth also and became a byword among them. Those, those who, who sit, sit at, at the, the gate, gate murmur against, against me, and, and the drunkards, drunkards make songs, songs about, about me. me. But as for me, this is my prayer to you. At the time you have set, O Lord, in your great mercy, O God, answer me with your unfailing help. Save, Save me, me from, from the, the mire. 
do not, not let me sink. Me sink. Let, me, let be me be rescued from, from those who hate me and, and out of deep, of the deep waters. waters. Let not the torrent of waters wash over me, neither let the deep swallow me up. Do not let the pit shut its mouth upon me. Answer, Answer me, O Lord, for your, your love, love is kind. kind. In, In your, your great, great compassion, compassion turn, turn to, to me. me. Hide not your face from your servant. Be swift and answer me, for I am in distress. Draw, Draw near, near to me and redeem me. Because, because of my, my enemies, enemies, deliver me. The Gospel for June 21st, Matthew chapter 10, verses 24 to 39. Jesus is speaking directly to his 12 disciples. He says to them, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall on the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. Do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace on earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. Those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The children's message. Sometimes... Sometimes what Jesus asks us to do is pretty hard. Sometimes it's even hard to understand what Jesus is asking us to do. Now, in the last lesson that I just read, he said, take up your cross and follow me. That's usually something we talk about during Lent. And for, for weeks now, that cross has been laying down back there behind the altar along with another one. And, and I was going to move them out, but I started thinking about it. This cross is one of those things. It's like Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me. So what did he, what did he mean by that? I, I thought maybe I'd try picking up the cross and hauling it out of here while you were watching. So maybe I can figure that out. Because sometimes it's hard to figure out what Jesus is talking about. So I thought maybe i pick this up, and, and maybe you saw, babe, if you watch Church for Good Friday, I was carrying this around. It's really heavy, and I'm really tired today. I didn't sleep very well last night, and, you know, it's been hot, and we don't have air conditioning, so I don't know if I'm strong enough to, to actually lift this. I don't know if I'm to Let's... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, there's some holes in here. Just, you know, there's some... Anyway, I'll try it again. Well, oh, maybe I'll just leave it there for now. Maybe I'll just leave it there and we can think about it. Sometimes the stuff that Jesus asks us to do, sometimes we kind of just have to leave it there sometimes and think about it. But the thing is, whenever Jesus challenges us, he also promises us that he's going to help us and he'll be with us. So maybe things like this, pick up your cross and follow me, and those other things that you just heard me read about, fathers and mothers and mothers-in-law and all of that stuff, it's really hard to understand. He promised us, though, that he'd help us. So maybe we should ask him about it. How do we ask, how do we ask Jesus things? Anybody? Anybody? 
Prayer. Yes, right. So let's pray. All right. <clears throat> um, dear Lord, and we say dear Lord because Jesus is our Lord, right? Okay. Dear Lord, help us understand. Give us your strength so we can do what you ask and help us understand. Anything yet? Anybody? You understand anything more yet? Me neither. Amen. Sometimes you just kind of have to leave things sit there for a while and think about them and maybe talk about them a little bit more with your parents or grandparents or somebody that you know loves you. And maybe talk some more to God about it too. Just pray to Jesus some more and go, I don't understand this, God. Can you help me? Sometimes that's, that's what we've got. Sometimes I wonder. Sometimes I don't understand. Sometimes I really don't get what Jesus is trying to say. And sometimes I look at the world and wonder, what is Jesus doing here? Whose side is God on? I grew up a while ago with the notion, maybe it was a myth, some people call it that, that since America won World War II, God is on America's side. That was a comfortable and a comforting idea to have. That was an ideal to have. I grew up in the heart of the so-called Cold War. Some of you were old enough to remember that. We were anxious about Russia in those days. It was called the Union of the Soviet Socialist Republic, the USSR. And we knew they had these big scary weapons, and we knew they had, that, that those weapons could, could reach us with missiles. And, and we knew that and when I was a kid, Cuba had, had Russian missiles in it, and we knew that they were pointed at us, and, and it was kind of scary. I grew up driving by Fairchild Air Force Base in Spokane, Washington. And the highway was a ways away from the base, but you could see the B-52 bombers. These are great big jet planes with huge tails on them, and you could see them from like three miles away. And as you drove by on the highway, there was line after line of these B-52 bomber tails sticking up over there. And I can remember as a kid, every time we would drive by, which is really pretty often. We'd drive by, and I'd see them over there, and I would, I'd mention to Mom or my dad, I'd say, gee, look at, all of the, look at all the bombers over there. And my mother's smile would turn thin, and she would get really, really quiet. See, my mother, my mother was a young teenager in Germany. She was underneath some of those unimaginably incredible weapons that America dropped on her country as a kid growing up. But when she was a young teenager in Germany, Adolf Hitler was just rising to power in the late 1930s. And she remembered and she would tell us occasionally that most of the people in Germany in those days thought this was their time. Hers was the generation. This was going to be when, when the German Reich, the German realm, would, would be restored to its glory and they would once again dominate the world. They were sure God was on their side. Most people believed that Germany was being blessed by God as they did return to prominence in Europe. Hitler, Adolf Hitler, gladly embraced the symbols and the language of some faith, not the Jewish faith, of course, but that didn't come till later, and most people in Germany didn't really see it happening till it was too late, that part of the story. But Hitler was glad to fan and relish the language of faith, to fan the notions that they were a chosen people, publishing propaganda pictures of himself, brandishing a Bible as he claimed divine blessing upon the Nazi way. They believed that God was on their side. But in spite of that genuine belief in God's favor, the Nazis lost. And my mother was a child of that defeat. Now, I don't know if my mother ever heard of Dietrich Bonhoeffer. 
He was a German Lutheran theologian, teacher, pastor, professor, thinker, writer. The media control that the Nazis had was nearly complete by the time that Bonhoeffer began to do what he was certain God was calling him to do. By the time Bonhoeffer and others like him began to sound the alarm about what the Nazis were doing, what their country was doing, began to question the message and the methods of Hitler's Nazi regime and to teach against them, by the time they began to do that, it was dangerous to do so. But Bonhoeffer was compelled to act, to preach, and even to plot against the Nazis. It was as if he were a new Jeremiah with a fire in his bones that he could not contain. It was as if he were a new German psalmist, adamant in his need to risk it all to maintain his zeal for God's grace. It was as if he took Jesus at Jesus' word that there in that time and place he too had to risk everything for God's grace. The Nazis lost. And still Dietrich Bonhoeffer was executed for his work. The war was already lost, but he was executed nonetheless. Whose side is God on? Jeremiah reminds us that even the chosen people of ancient Israel, God's chosen people, the sons of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, the the relatives of Moses, God's own people of the covenant, the beloved of God, even they found themselves defeated time and time again by the very hand of the one they claimed as their God and who claimed them as God's own people. We heard the psalmist in our lessons today join Jeremiah in reminding us that the message of that discipline is hard to hear. Difficult to preach. The repentance and the challenge of our, disip- of our wounding ways, we do not wish to witness. Jesus knew that as he warned his disciples about their coming task. Jeremiah knew it. The psalmist knew it. But the fire burned in them, and so they spoke. And they both offered hope. Sing to the Lord. Praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of evildoers, Jeremiah. But as for me, this is my prayer to you. At the time you have set, O Lord, in your great mercy, O God, answer me with your unfailing help. Save me from the mire. Do not let me sink. Let me be rescued. Psalm 69. God's response has always been not human style. Jesus is clear in his prophecy today, offering the strength to not fear in the midst of God's call into difficult times. God's response is to urge me to reframe the question, not whose side is God on, but am I? On God's side. Today's lesson asks us, who burns? Who burns with the fire of God's message? In the face of face masks and the continued need for physical distancing, in the dissipating mist of tear gas and the echoing, ongoing cries for justice and reform, do we hear God's call? Do we become God's messengers? Do I hear the promise that even in the face of struggles that will divide us, do I hear the promise of God's mercy and rescue? And if I hear it, will I let it change me so that we can change the world? When Sandy, my wife, graduated from Sister Rosalind's School of Therapeutic Massage in Fargo, the theme verse that was proclaimed over her hands as those hands were anointed for the task to which Sandy has dedicated her life 
the verse that is wrought in metal and stands above the stairs in our home, the verse that has been emblazoned over many of the peaceful Black Lives Matter events, Micah 6, 8, the Lord has told you, O mortal, what is good and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. That is the life. That is the burning fire that Jesus helps us find. That is the side we can be on. It won't be easy. And sometimes we might have to struggle with carrying that cross. But God will help. And I invite you to join in this affirmation of faith, which we will use this day. We believe the God, the Father, the creator of justice, and the deliverer of the needy. We believe in Jesus, the Savior of the world, who calls everyone to walk in the difficult ways of discipleship. We believe in God's own spirit sent to light the fire of God's message of grace deep in our bones. Amen. And at this time, we invite you to prepare your offerings for the 
ministry here at Our Savior's Lutheran Church or others that you are supporting, and also recognizing that only not only monetary offerings, but also offerings of time and your talents, the gifts that you have, are also offerings that are received. Let us pray. Merciful God, we, we offer, offer with joy, joy and, and thanksgiving, thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I will take a few moments to share some of the announcements here at Our Savior. Certainly to thank the Rebecca Circle for their sponsorship of the radio broadcast for this Sunday. And that's to remember our church family. And also remembering that we can't meet together here. The last time we did that was actually March 15th. But that we meet together in various ways, certainly through media, and we're grateful we have that. The SMART team, a group of eight people, has been researching and met as to when we might be able to reopen as a group, looking at those health department guidelines and certainly guidelines also from our denomination. And they have ordered some hand sanitizers. And so at this stage of the game, it looks like it will probably, probably be rally day, the beginning of September, when we are able to first meet as a group here. And so stay tuned for that. And we will also need some donations of masks, one in each, one in a Ziploc bag. And um, so if you are a seamstress or an aspiring seamstress and would be willing to help us out with those donations, we would appreciate that. So last week, I issued a challenge. And I said that Minnesota Public Radio does this all the time during their fundraising drives. You know, they need to meet such and such a amount. Well, I wasn't issuing a challenge about money, but I was issuing a challenge about people letting us know what areas they work in, what settings. And I asked for 10 by today. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> did we make it or not? No, we did not. However, we did have two people, and I just chuckled when I read their email, and I appreciated that. And so we actually have you know, eight to go. So this week, we are lifting up those individuals who uh, work in hospitality, personal services, and retail. And so we recognize them in our prayers. And then our nine Polanka deacons have actually been given names of people uh, to pray for by name who work in those settings. And next week, we will be lifting up individuals who work in government, in the prison system, court systems, and city, state, and county levels, and also out at Fond du Lac. So um, that's what we're up to next week. And so we've been doing this for a little while now as we're all affected by COVID. So those are our shortened announcements this week. And yes, the challenge still remains. So send me an email so I can smile because you responded. And I will give a report next week. All right, with that, we continue with our prayers of intercession. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Expansive God, we praise you for you bring diverse voices together to form your church. Open our hearts and unstop our ears to learn from one another that differences might not overshadow our baptismal unity. Remind us of your call to proclaim the world-changing power of your grace for all people. Help us be ever more diligent to live that change into a world where too many black, indigenous, and people of color have not been able to know the peace of that truth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Providing God, we give you praise because your creation shows us that life comes from death. Renew the places where our land, air, and waterways have been ill for too long. Help us challenge the forces that would weaken efforts to protect the land and air and water. 
from those who would use it for the financial benefit of only a few. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Protecting God, we give you praise because you sustain and keep safe all who work to defend others across the world. Revive and strengthen personal care workers, retail professionals and hospitality industry servants, and others dedicated to caring for others and serving our needs. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, Your mercy is, is great. great. Loving God, we praise you because you keep your promise to be with all who need your healing. Remind us that in your strength, we can help fill the stomachs of the hungry. We can help build up the shattered and give rest to the weary. We can bring a message of hope to the disillusioned. With your strength, restore the sick, sustain those facing surgery, guide those in therapy, Encourage those in counseling, strengthen those in rehab, build up those in recovery, comfort those facing death, and grant peace to those who mourn, including any of those that we know and name in our hearts before you. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Compassionate God, we give you praise because you are with us and we are never alone. Bless all fathers and father figures who strive to love and nurture as you do. Comfort all who long to be fathers and all for whom this day is difficult. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Reigning God, we praise you because you bless us with guides and caretakers in the faith. Bless the work and ministry of ELCA presiding Bishop Elizabeth Eaton and our own Northeastern Minnesota Bishop Tom Aiken and all those who work with them. Increase our care for one another as we walk together in newness of life. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who teaches us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your name. name. Your, your kingdom come, come. Your, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen and receive the benediction. God, the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Amen. Go, Go in, in peace. peace. Christ, Christ is, is with, with you. you. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.